Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Captain of My Shed, I'm Captain Mikey. On this episode, a little bit of a smaller project, um, a friend of mine is turning a certain age, 40, and I thought I'd make him a gift for that uh, auspicious day. And he has over, he, he has been uh, building his own extension and part of that has been ripping out some of the old uh, window frames and woodwork and it's left me with uh, some of this mahogany. I have made boxes on the channel before, so it'll be a similar kind of vibe to that, but um, my workshop's a bit different now, so we'll see how much quicker I can get this done. I'm sure some of you are looking to make gifts, and this is a great gift that you could give to anyone, girl or boy. Nice and simple, uh, but we'll show off your uh, your skills, or lack of, we'll see. Anyway, I'll shut up now, we'll get building, and I'll see you at the end. Right, I'm going to take you through this project, warts and all. I'll show you the mistakes that get made. Uh, it doesn't go perfectly, but the result is great, and, uh, and that's the main point. So I'm starting out here just by cutting off the awkward parts of the moulding, the original moulding. This was for a, a door, I think, a door frame um, that my friend ripped out, and he gave me the bits of wood. And, um, yeah, early on, I make a bit of a mistake here because... I made a, uh, an adjustment and an attempt to improve my table saw fence and stop it from rocking when I lock it. Um, I've basically made it so it doesn't lock properly anymore, which is rubbish, but there you go. <laughs> so you might even be able to see it moving a tiny bit away from the blade each time I push something through. Uh, that's just given me more work. So in an attempt to... Um, to finish up that wood and make it nice and smooth and parallel sided, I'm uh, breaking out the thickness planer and I'll run these boards through, getting them to the thickness that I want, which is around about 20 mil or just, just less than 20 mil thick. So obviously I'm setting up here to cut the mitres. This box is gonna be mitre joined together. I make another mistake here. I'm not sh quite sure what's happening. Um, this cut goes nicely, but the next one, the piece is, uh, is held up off the saw table at one end, almost like it's twisted, which I know it isn't because I've just sent it through the thickness planer. Um, but I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So I clamp this block into place, just uh, enables me to make repetitive length of cross cut without running the end piece along the fence and, and potentially trapping it between it and the spinning blade, which is not what you want. It's a recipe for uh, kickback there. And here you can see that piece is not fully supported on the table. It's not fully flat for some reason. Uh, not the case with this cut, but I might pay for that a little bit later on in this project. That said, I don't see it really at this stage. So the parts for the box body are cut, body and lid, which is the same thing in this case. But this is what we're going to make the top of the box out of. And we're going to turn this into a pattern. I was obviously brimming with confidence there. Uh, anyway, this stage kind of uh, explains itself as you watch, but basically still on 45 degrees here and looking to make a, uh, a small mitre, which I'm gluing up now, and you'll see how I get on with that. Getting the mustard on the hot dog right down the middle. Use 
use my thumbs to locate that corner so it stays nice and oop, flush like that and now the pressure there we go leave to dry ta-da Hands up who's done that before. What a plank, Michael. I'm now cutting a groove for the base. It's about five mil up from the bottom of the base and it's a six mil wide groove. Uh, ideally, I'd have some 6mm material, some plywood or something similar to make the base with, but I don't, so I'm going to have to resaw using my table saw. I haven't yet set up my bandsaw for resawing just yet, so table saw it is, but it works pretty well. This is a great technique if you're trying to work quickly and you don't want to wait for things to dry. So the wood glue is there that will add strength once it goes on. But in the meantime, the CA glue that I'm adding in between here will hold the piece together instead of clamping it together and waiting for the glue to dry. It's just a little bit quicker and uh, time is of the essence in this project. I'm sort of doing this upside down. It would have been much easier to do it the other way around. But um, yeah, you will have seen this before. Tape on all the mitres. Make sure the, uh, the edges are nice and tight up together. And then uh, later on, you can fold that whole thing up. And it should work out really nicely. And they kind of act as almost self-tightening clamps. That green tape is uh, a little bit stretchy and it works really well in this application. I pretty much got away with it, it's tough to tell, but now that I've got all four corners joined, I can see that one of the corners has a slight gap to it. It's this one I've got my thumb on there. And um, that is, I think, because of that one piece that I cut towards the beginning of the video that wasn't sitting perfectly flat on the table. That said, it's close enough, and um, I've got a little fix for that that should hide the gap. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Can't really see it on the camera there, but there is a small gap in that corner. So I'm just taking the edge of a screwdriver and rubbing it at an angle, uh, effectively just bending the corner fibers of those two mitres into the gap so you can't see it anymore. And that's the result. Bit of a blunder. I forgot to press record when I was cutting the top away from the base on the table saw. Easily done just using the fence. This thin stock that I'm sort of press fitting as a sort of dry fit um, there in, in the picture is uh, serving two purposes. It's creating a lip so that the lid will sit inside the box. That lip will sit inside the body of the box. And it's also creating a shelf on the other side for the top of the box to sit on later. This is me just cleaning off the glue from those... Um, pieces of ply that I might have glued up. It's important that they don't have glue on there, so I'm just uh, cleaning out the inside corner here 
and before just the outside faces ready for the step, which I forgot to film actually, and that is just slicing this up, which is a little bit tricky to do because it does tend to get a bit feathery um, where the blade comes through. So you have to be conscious about which direction you cut the slices of that up in. Um, you'll see them in a minute. And so, yeah, I'm gluing in another piece of the mahogany in just for a bit of interest into the pattern. And again, I'll bring out the green tape and, uh, and that will hold that in place nicely while it dries. And once it's dried, try and cut that square. Recut the two faces that the, uh, that the mahogany is on and um, make it nice and square and that will make your job of laying out the pattern later a little bit easier this is just a bit of hardboard that the top is going to be made out of um, so i'm cutting that out ready to stick some veneer on for the inside i've chosen an ebony veneer just because i had some in the workshop and here it goes um, i'm using wood glue to stick it on possibly not the ideal way to go contact adhesive might have been better um, but I didn't have any, so wood glue it is, and uh, I think you'll see in a minute it works pretty well. All right, dude? Yeah. Oh, I'm assuming that's the box over there. Yeah, that's the box and the lid. Mm -hmm. Now I need a flat piece, a small flat piece of Dad. something like... What if you ironed it on? Uh, or you well, you can actually get like uh, iron on veneer. Mm. It has its own like glue on the back of it mm -hmm. and it's activated by the heat. Just putting a bunch of heads But this on ain't it. that, unfortunately. Mm. I've just got to hope that. I'm assuming you've glued it as well, have you? Huh? You've glued the thing to the thing? Yeah, I've glued the. Yeah, I've glued the veneer onto that that backer, hardboard backer, and it's going to drop into that space there. Oh, that's nice. Well, having got the approval of child number one, it's time to lay out the pattern. These are the slices that I sh forgot to show you uh, being cut up. Um, and in the middle there, there's uh, a couple of tiles that I glued uh, on the wrong side of the hardboard, so I had to peel them off, but that'll all get sanded off later. The pattern's coming together quite nicely. The the squares are pretty well square-edged, so there's next to nothing in the way of gaps, which is what I want. And, uh, and when it's all put together, I think it's a pretty effective pattern. That's the pattern sanded nice and flush across the board, nice and smooth. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of CA glue into any tiny gaps that are left. And um, I'll, I'll rub that down with some sandpaper. And that will create some dust. And that dust will mix with the CA glue and act like a filler that will go into the tiny gaps. Quite an effective way of filling small gaps like that. Just adding a small chamfer here as well to the edge of that pattern and then it should be ready to fit onto the lid of the box. Oh, 
Welcome to the beginning of the biggest mistake that I made on this project. I thought this was a neat little jig using the speed square as a sort of five, 45 degree support to the box. Um, you can see the fence start to move a little bit here and uh, I'll explain a bit more in a moment. Okay, well, I'm trying to make the uh, slots for splines that go into the corners here. And because I'm rushing, basically, I've made a right dog's dinner of it. And, um, which is a shame, really, <laughs> because it was going so well. But uh, I'm not going to kind of throw this away and start again from scratch. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is kind of remake the jig a little bit so to uh, bring it over to the router table and just route out the whole of the slots that you see. We'll keep trying and if at some point it's, uh, it's a no-go, I'm just going to have to accept defeat, but I'm not there yet. Don't do this at home, kids. Uh, getting your fingers that close to a rotating bit is not a good idea. It would have been far better for me to use some clamps and actually clamp the box to the jig. would have been simply done too. Uh, I'm just trying to save time here and uh, in turn risking my fingers. Stroke of luck, I've got this lovely piece of ash. She has a reasonably nice grain to it actually on the edge there and it's exactly the size I need. That will save me some time. So let's get that cut down. If you are going to sand a box like this, make sure you do it with the lid in place because it's quite easy to sand something a bit too much and then your lid doesn't line up properly. Uh, and now I'm just going to blow the dust away so that later on when I put some finish on, it's not all milky. So this is the first and possibly a last time using these barrel hinges. I'm measuring the gap in between their open position there so that uh, I can halve that then and put the center of the holes that I drill uh, that distance plus half the diameter of the barrel away from the edge of the box. And you should have a box that then opens 180 degrees. And ultimately it did work, although I opted to, to uh, glue them in place rather than use the screws, which I found started to split the wood, which uh, not ideal. This little chamfer is, uh, it's a nice little touch, I think, a nice little detail. Also, if it wasn't the case for me with this box, luckily, but if you do make a box and it's slightly out in places, the gaps not perfect around the hole, um, around the lid and the base of the box, then this chamfer will just help hide that kind of thing. Um, 
uh, I, I was lucky. I pretty much got away with it and uh, and had a decent fitting box all the way around. But uh, I think it's a nice looking touch anyway. So in goes the top finally, and that'll be glued and clamped in place, and then we can get onto the finish. So two coats of Osmo going on now. My process is to wipe it on nice and thin, wipe off the excess as I go, then rub down in between coats lightly with 400 grit sandpaper uh, before the second coat goes on and we're done. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased that I stuck with this project even though it's not been perfect. That's almost part of the design charm, I think. Uh, this piece of wood came out of uh, the original house before my friend started extending it and so hopefully it's got a little bit more meaning for him than just any old box um i think it looks beautiful i'm really pleased with the result and i think he likes it too anyway bit of country music now let me know what a jelly roll is because i haven't got a clue and uh, thanks for watching Down in Louisiana, where the tall, tall pine trees grow, there live a preacher daughter and she knows how to jelly roll. And a papa wanna save my soul, but a sweet talking daughter, Lord, she loves to jelly roll. Yes, she does. Come on home. 